My mother died in 1985, and it was my job to go out and close up her house and dispose of her possessions. And mother had three incredibly priceless possessions. One was her violin, the second was her diary, and the third was a photo album that she and her lover of, of when she was a teenager produced this album, and he did the photography, and mother reenacted in still pictures the creation of woman. And it was a gift from equivalent to God to man, and the story tells how man has fallen deeply in love with her and can't live, with, live without her, and then, but he also can't live with her, and, um, and in the end, he's sort of stuck with her. It's a wonderful, wonderful translation. Um, it's translated to me by Nad Nadia Gamova, a very distant relative. Um, my grandfather's brother um, was her great-great-grandfather. So she's down the line a little bit. She's 30 years old, and she just did a wonderful job translating these various pictures, which represents this poetical story, probably written by both my mother and her lover. And here's the translation. In the beginning, when Twasta started creating a woman, he saw that he had spent all his materials on the creation of a man, and that no simple elements remained. After deep pondering upon the dilemma, he solved it the following way. He took the round forms of the moon and the curves of the reptiles, tenacity of plant tendrils, and the brilliance of lightning, the lightness of leaves, and the self-admiration of Narcissus, thinness of the elephant trunks, and a deer's gaze, beehive density, tranquil cheerfulness of sunbeams and the crying clouds, bear's delicacy and the camel's pride, the hair's shyness and the peacock's conceit, softness of a parrot's breast and the diamond hardness, dragonfly's carelessness and thoughtfulness and moments of lakes, monkeys grimacing and honey sweetness, tiger's cruelty, fire warmth and snow coldness, mule's stubbornness, and magpie's talkativeness, sea restlessness, and flowers booming. And by combining it all, he created a woman, and he gave her to man. But after a week had passed, the man came to him and he said, O oh Lord, the creature that you gave me poisons my life. It chatters unceasingly and bothers me immeasurably and is always by my side. It requires constant care and devours all my time. And mere trifles makes it weep and constantly lazy. And that is why I have come to you to return the woman, because I can't live with her. And then Twasta answered, very well, and took her back. Another week had passed, the man came back to him again and said, Oh Lord, I find my life is a desolate place since I have returned that creature to you. I remember how she danced and sang to me, looked out for me out of the corner of her eye, played with me and cuddled up to me, and her laughter was like music, and I feasted my eyes on her beauty, and that's why I want to take her back. And then Twasta answered, very well, and gave her to him again. This time, only three days passed before the man came to him and said, Oh Lord, I don't know how it happened, but now I think she gives me more trouble than pleasure, and that is why I beg you to take her back. But Twasta answered, Out with you! I'm tired of you! You must settle the matter yourself. And the man exclaimed, But I can't live with her. But Twasta objected, But you couldn't live without her either. 
and he turned his back on the man and returned to his work. Then the man said, what am I to do? I can't live with her and I can't live without her. Reading this album and seeing the translation is very sentimental for me because I think I now have an insight in my mother that I always suspected and maybe didn't understand and would not have understood when I was younger. And I feel a little guilty in one hand of exposing to the world something so sensitive and so lovely and so secret that Mother had cherished so much. But I think that the gods would forgive me because it's a beautiful story and, um, and it shows with clarity how my mother stands equal with my father on the two sides.